Welcome to Dateline Polk with news about your county government. I'm your host, Joshua Wilson, and today you'll learn about county commission actions from the July 5th board meeting. By state statutes, in July, the board must adopt non avalorum assessments that will appear on residents' truth and millage, also known as trim notices, in August. First, the board adopted a tentative rate resolution and assessment role for the 2016 through 17 nuisance abatement liens to be collected on November tax bills. Polk County has undertaken a program to improve various properties throughout the county by requiring the collection of code violations for junk, debris, overgrown lots, unsecured pools, infestation, vacant structure open to public, building numbering, and storage of abandoned or distressed vehicles. When not corrected by property owners, the county undertakes the abatement of the nuisance and may impose a lien on properties where owners have failed or refused to reimburse the county for costs incurred for improving the property. By adopting this resolution, the board is taking the next step required to, to collect the liens on the 2016 through 17 tax bills. The board also adopted the tentative rate resolution for fire fee assessments for unincorporated Polk County. Rates will remain the same as the current fiscal year, with owners of a single family residence paying $195 fee and mobile home owners will pay $87. The board adopted the tentative rate resolution for the 2016 through 17 street lighting assessments in various neighborhoods throughout the county, and the board set fees for residential waste collection in unincorporated Polk. These rates also remain the same, $109.80 for collection and $44 for disposal. With the completion of improvements of water and wastewater infrastructure in the Skyview neighborhood of Lakeland, the board adopted a tentative rate resolution for Skyview residents in their Municipal Services Benefit Unit. The board approved revising a subcontract between the Board of the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida and Healthy Families. The county will continue serving approximately 600 families through June 30th, 2017. This grant will provide the county with about $1.3 million for the home visitation program that promotes positive parenting, self-sufficiency, healthy child development, and prevents poor childhood outcomes such as abuse or neglect for high-risk families in Polk County. A consultant services authorization with Chastain Skillman Incorporated for approximately $84,000 was approved, as well as a transfer for $1.6 million from reserves for the Island Club West Facilities Improvement Project. In order for Polk County Utilities to assume ownership, operation, and maintenance of the existing utility system serving the Island Club West development, certain improvements have been identified as necessary to bring the system up to Polk County standards at the time of construction. In a similar situation, the board approved a consultant services authorization for the Bimini Bay Utility Improvement Project. The contract with Pannoni Associates Incorporated is not to exceed approximately $110,000. The county will transfer $1.4 million from reserves to help pay for this project. Following construction and improvements to Island Club West and Bimini Bay's water systems, a Municipal Services Benefit Unit, or MSBU, will be levied on property owners to pay back the county the estimated $3 million for required system upgrades over 20 years. The board amended the Roads and Drainage Division's Community Investment Plan by approving the transfer of nearly $700,000 from the Northeast Polk Roadway Fund to the Ernie Caldwell Boulevard project. The funds are necessary to complete the project, which should be done by December 2016. We brought before the board an agenda item to transfer funds uh, for the Ernie Caldwell Boulevard project that's currently under construction. Uh, the movement of that funds will allow us to complete that project and move on with another phase, completing an access road that was part of a right-of-way agreement with Standard and Silica Sand. And we hope that the Ernie Caldwell will be open sometime before the end of the year and provide people access between Highway 27 and 1792. The board approved transferring approximately $2.8 million from the Fleet Replacement Reserve for Future Capital into the Fleet Replacement Capital account. This is to cover cost of vehicles and fire equipment that was actually ordered in fiscal year 2014 through 15, but not delivered until this fiscal year. 
A CIP amendment and budget transfer for the completion of the Sergeant Mary Campbell Way Temporary Fire Rescue Station was approved. This transfer is for $200,000 that will consist of permitting, engineering services, utility infrastructure, and site improvements for the installation of a temporary modular building and vehicle canopy establishing a temporary fire rescue station for personnel to be located at Sergeant Mary Campbell Way. This property is located near the intersection of US 27 and Thompson Nursery Road and is adjacent to a sheriff's substation and a school board facility. The board also confirmed the appointment of Anthony Stravino as Polk County's new fire rescue chief. Stravino, who is currently in a similar position in Broward County, will begin serving in Polk County on or before September 12, 2016. Chief Stravino holds certifications as a firefighter, EMT, paramedic, live fire training instructor, and fire instructor three. Hi, my name is Tony Stravino. I'm the new fire chief of Polk County Fire Rescue. I'm honored to be chosen by Mr. Freeman and the Board of County Commissioners. I look forward to following in Chief Cash's footsteps and doing an outstanding job in enhancing public safety in the community. In other news, board action also included three litigation settlements totaling about $275,000 and two lay board appointments. Stacy Campbell Dominic was approved to be the Workforce Skilled Labor Representative on the Citizens Health Care Oversight Committee for the remainder of a four-year term ending September 30, 2017. Jean Reed was appointed to serve as a member of the Polk County Lakes Assets Advisory Committee for the remainder of a three-year term ending November 16, 2016. In public hearings, the board did not adopt a staff-initiated ordinance that would have amended the Land Development Code changing the hours of alcoholic beverage sales on Sundays in unincorporated Polk County. Commissioners Bell and Dansler voted for an amended ordinance that would have allowed extended hours for beer and wine sales on Sunday. However, Commissioners Hall, Lindsay, and Smith voted against the proposed and amended ordinance. The board voted to continue discussion until their August 16th public hearings regarding an ordinance to amend the Land Development Code regarding the allowance of soil manufacturing businesses for staff and the applicant to consider options to address the board's concerns on this issue. The board approved an applicant-initiated request for planned development of a transitional area that includes 108-unit multifamily development on approximately 10 acres on Jersey Road, north of Havendale Boulevard. And finally, the board approved a resolution adopting the FY 2016 through 2020 consolidated plan and 2016 through 17 action plan and authorized the Housing and Neighborhood Development Program to transmit these plans to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Polk County anticipates receiving approximately $21 million in federal HUD grants during this five-year time frame. Well, that wraps up this edition of Dateline Polk. To keep current with programs and progress in the county, visit us online at polk-county.net or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We encourage you to join us at the next scheduled board meeting at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, July 19th. I'm Joshua Wilson. Thanks for watching.